Hey everyone, in this tutorial we will make the first steps into Cypress. The agenda covers an introduction into this framework, we will discuss about pros and cons, the installation process and we will conclude this video by creating a new project. Let's get started! Cypress is an open source JavaScript end-to-end -end testing framework which promises better, faster and more reliable testing for anything that runs in a browser working on any front-end framework or website. It's compatible with macOS, Linux and Windows. In terms of pros and cons, it provides the following advantages. A simple usage, automatic waiting, great documentation, real-time reloads, it helps you finding locators, it's free and open source, debugging is easier, it allows network traffic control, it provides screenshots and videos and consistent results. It's time to move to the disadvantages. It has limited iframe support. It supports only JavaScript language. It can't handle multiple browser tabs. It has limited cross-browser support. It's hard to parallelize test execution. It has no out-of-the-box page object model. And you can't out-of-the-box handle file upload. In terms of installation, it requires npm and node.js as prerequisites, then the process is pretty much simple. You just need to create the project folder, initialize npm, then install and open Cypress. Let me show you how simple it is to get the framework up and running. Simply create the project folder. Now we have to initialize the npm by typing npm in it. You can simply enter uh, for all of these details. And in the final you will notice that the package.json file has been created. It's similar to pomxml in Maven. It will store all the dependencies of this project. The next step is to install the Cypress dependency. We can do that by typing npm install hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev cypress. Great, it looks good so far. We can check the cypress dependency by having a look into the package.json file. You will notice the Cypress is located under dev dependencies having the version 4.11.0. That's it. Now we can simply open up the test runner by using the following command that is also found under the description below. It will be node modules.bin cypress open. Enter. As you can see, one of the benefits is that it automatically creates the folder structure for us. It also adds some test examples that will help us getting started located under integration examples. We got fixtures used to store the test data files. We got example.json as a template. We have the plugins folder being a kind of a listener. For example, you can set some options related to certificates, for example, and so on. So when the browser is invoked, they will be already in place. We got support, the place to store reusable methods. And beside all of this, there is also a file I will show you in a second. It's called cypress.json. Basically, it's the config file of the project. 
So in here we can set the configs like timeouts, reporters and so on. And putting the properties in here, basically you will overwrite the default ones. I recommend you to stick with the folder structure as much as possible. The test should be always located under integration or examples folder, hence they will be visible out of the box in the test runner. From here you can simply execute any of them with a simple click. As you can see we have some existing examples regarding actions, files, navigation, um, waiting window and so on. Let's execute one of them. So basically the spec file that uh, I've just clicked on is a test suite that contains multiple test scenarios. You can see all the test scenarios in here. They are similar with the test methods in Java. So they are being executed. Great, all the tests passed. If we click any of this test scenario, we will see each step regarding uh, it. So more than that, another really nice feature in Cypress that helps us with the debugging process is that whenever you click a step, in the right uh, side of the screen you will see a print screen for each of those moments. That's it. Great. In the test runner we have the possibility to select the browser. Currently we can choose between Chrome, Firefox, Beta and Electron. So you can simply select the browser and run the tests. Other than that we have the option to run all the specs together, not just one by one. We have a filter option. We have a runs tab which refers to a dashboard feature that will be covered in uh, another video. And we have settings with the default values of the configuration. All these values can be uh, modified in the cypress.json file that I told you about a bit earlier. So yeah, that's it. In the last part of this tutorial, let's have a quick look into the tests and analyze how they look like. Open the project in a text editor. So we already agreed that the tests are located under Cypress integration examples. Open up one of them. So, as you can see, all the scenarios sit in the context, aka describe. Each test is represented by the keyword IT. It's similar to a method in Java annotated with test. We also notice a hook in here that gets executed before each test scenario similar with uh, the before method annotation provided by testng in java. Let's create our own test. Create a new file under examples called mytest.spec.js. Now we can simply copy paste an existing example and update it accordingly or we can create it from scratch. Let's proceed with the second approach. As we said, all the test scenarios sit in the context or describe method. This method accepts two arguments. The first of them is the description of the test suite. The second argument is a function so this concept of passing a function as an argument is called a callback in JavaScript. 
we will create the tests in this callback. The same goes for the IT method. The first argument is the scenario description. And the second argument is, yeah, a callback. Cypress provides out of the box lots of built-in functions that we can simply call. For example, to open a specific website, we pass the URL into a visit function. All these functions are available via CY object. Now we can simply make an assertion validating that the URL contains the learn with RV word. The syntax is pretty much self-explanatory. So we got the CY object dot URL dot should contain learn with RV. Save the file. And once we saved the file, it will be automatically displayed in the test runner. This is the file and with a click it will get executed. That's it. The test has been successfully executed. It opened up a Firefox browser, accessed the URL, then asserted that the URL contains the learn with RV word. Another really nice feature of this framework is that it creates the locators for you. For example, if you want to add an additional step uh, to this uh, test, we can simply click this open selector playground and hover in the app the button that we want to click in the next step. For example, if we want to click this drop down button, we can simply hover it and click and Cypress will generate the locator automatically for us. So you can simply uh, click copy to clipboard, go into your test, add a new step, paste it. So now you have the locator, so you can simply add an action on it. For example, we want to click that button. If we simply save the file, go into the test runner, stop the execution for the previous uh, scenario and click one more time on the file. As you can see, it automatically clicked the drop downs button. So in this screenshot, we see that uh, the drop downs page has been displayed. Easy, right? No worries, we will go in depth with all this cool stuff in the next tutorial. Stay tuned.